Hi guys, my name is Edith Wairimo and I am a music minister. I decided to make this video because I really, really miss Bible study. Um, since COVID came, um, we've not really been able to assemble for Bible study as often as we would want to. And I just had this this word in my heart that I, I feel I should share. So if you could give me just a few minutes of your time, maybe like five minutes, I will go directly into the word that God is putting in my heart today. And I pray it's going to be of, of a blessing. It's a word that I really love, as, as in I really, really love. Um, first of all, I am a lover of the Gospels. I love I love the Gospels. I love um, when I get to see uh, what Jesus did while he was here on this earth. And uh, technically, one of the reasons why I normally love the Gospels is because it's a direct contact to my Savior. Um, in the things that he said, he said it being man and being God. And so it normally gives me a really clear instruction of where the heart of God is concerning the things that are going on in life. So if he addressed money and he said um, ABC, then I know that is where the heart of God is. I know that uh, as we read the word of all, all word is inspired of God, but it really gives me great comfort to, to see uh, places where Jesus had to go through something. And so that when I'm going through it, I know that I'm, I'm I, you know, I'm not the first one to go through it, that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ also went through it and because he overcame i will also overcome so um let's turn our bibles uh, to the book of mark chapter 5 it's a verse it's 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 a scripture i really really love because it involves um the healing of a demon possessed man who was in the area of gerasene and the reason why I love this scripture so much is because we see a demon possessed man turned into an evangelist or a minister of the word of God in um, in just a few moments. And so the Bible says that um, so it from verse one, it says that so they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from a cemetery to meet him. And so we know that a cemetery is a place where the dead live. A cemetery is a place where the, the dead are, you know, they are put to, to rest. And so we mean that that means that this man used to live amongst the dead. Therefore, that could have a significance to show us that he was as good as dead. It means that people had written him off. It means that he'd gotten to a place where um he used to, you know, he just used to live with people who are dead meaning that his life was not worth much he was as good as dead in verse number three it says that um, this man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained even with a chain i mean my question at this point would be like if the man was already demon possessed it means that he was already going through a period of being chained by the devil so why would people want to chain him more but that just gives me a solution that men do not have the solution for the spiritual caging all men can do the, the human effort to try and deal with spiritual things will only lead to more um will only lead to more caging if man tries to deal with spiritual problems using carnality, using uh, manly ways, the best that he can do is make the situation worse. And I drive, uh, I drive your, um, I, I take your mind to the point where Pharaoh uh, had had his magicians, and when and when Moses was trying to set the children of Israel free, um, he would he would do certain certain things uh, according to the instruction of God, and when when, and when go and when when Moses would put his rod down and create snakes, then the magicians would also put their small rods down and create small snakes. So that therefore means that the best that the devil can do is just make the situation worse. The devil has no solutions. 
and at that particular time when when uh when Moses would uh create something and the magicians would create the same thing the only thing that they did was actually make the situation worse there was nothing that they did that actually made the situation any better and so I continue on and I, I verse number four says that whenever he was put into chains and shackles as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrists and smashed the, shack, the, the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night he wandered among the burial cave and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with, with the sharp stones. I mean, we, we see this man in great distress. I mean, the enemy was tormenting him to the point where he couldn't keep silent. He was crying. He was howling in the night. You know, you know what howls a wolf or a dog? That's how he used to sound in the night. And he used to cry, he used to cry for help, but no one would be able to help him because in trying to help him, you know, by putting him in chains, the only thing that they did was give him more strength. They only empowered him with more demons because the Bible says that it got to a point they could not uh, cage him anymore. That means that there, there is a possibility that there was a time when they were actually able to subdue him. But the more they tried to subdue him, the more the devil empowered him with more demons. And at some point he had so many of them that he could not be subdued anymore. And we see one of the things, one of the characteristics of someone who is bound and caged is that he used to cut himself with stones. I don't know if this, if this drives you to the point where, do you remember when this false prophets who are trying to um, stand with Elijah, they, they would, um, the, the, the false prophets that belong to Jezebel. And there was this time when there was a contest in on Mount Carmel where they were trying to determine who is the true God. Is it Yahweh or is it, is it, is it a Baal, the God? And one of the things that you remember them doing is that they will cut themselves with, you know, with stones calling upon Baal. And so that means that Satanism is destructive. Satanism is destructive and cutting their skins. We, we also, it, it brings, um, my attention to the people who actually tattoo their body and they actually, you know, they, they cut their body. They make markings upon their body. And, 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 um, I remember scripture which says that you know, do not tattoo your body or make markings on it. And so it leads me to the point that tattooing is actually not godly. It's not of God. And it does not have godly purpose. And uh, as we continue on to verse number six, it says that when Jesus was was still some distance away, a man saw um, the man saw him and ran to meet him and bowed low before him. With a shriek, he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In the name of God, I beg you, do not torture me. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. So we see, um, we see the man getting to a point where the evil spirits in him try to negotiate with Jesus. And they tell him, please do not, do not torture me. When he says, do not torture me, it's not the man speaking. It's the evil spirit living within the man. And he's trying to negotiate with Jesus. But I love God. I love God so much because the salvation of Jesus does not know any negotiation. And Jesus is not in the business of negotiating for your life. When Jesus saved you, he saved you once and for all. And Jesus is not in the business of negotiating with the devil for your life. Christ is not in the business of trying to negotiate with the enemy of whether or not he can save you. Christ wants your life. And, 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 um, it says in the in, in verse number nine, Mark, Mark chapter five, verse nine, it says, and Jesus demanded, what is your name? And he replied, Legion. My name is Legion because there are many of us inside this man. So what that means is that because of the many demons that lived in this man, it got to a point that the man lost his identity. And that is what happens when Satan comes into any man's life. That person loses their identity. And that is why you find that the man did not even have a name. 
He only took the name that he proclaimed he had was the name that the, the uh, was the name that symbolized how many demons that he had. That means that he had lost his identity and actually taken the identity of how many demons were living within him and in verse number 10 the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place in verse number 11 there happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby send us into those pigs the spirits begged let us enter them and so there was there was a point where the demons actually asked Jesus, please do not send us into a distant place or do not send us into a dry place. Because often what happens is that demons... Um, when they are being tortured, they are sent into, you know, they are sent into the dry places. But Jesus, um, but, but the, but the demons beg Jesus, please don't send us to, to, to those distant places, to the dry places. Just send us into, into these pigs. And pigs are just animals. And so Jesus is, uh, was willing, of course, to sacrifice, you know, to sacrifice animals for, for, for the sake of this man's life in verse number 13, in verse number 13. So Jesus gave them permission. So it means that even demons answer to Christ. Satan answers to the authority of Christ and Satan and, and God are not at the same level. They, they do not, they are not, God is not fighting Satan because God is so far much more powerful than, than Satan and his kings could ever try to be. So Satan and God are not at war because God is, is, is superior, but God allows things to happen. He allows circumstances into our lives because we have something that we call willpower. We have, we have willpower and willpower is, is the power to make decisions about whether or not you would allow Christ into your life or whether or not you want the devil to actually take control of your life. And verse number 13, as we continue, so Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs. And the entire herd of pigs, about 2,000, plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed to see what had happened. A crowd gathered around Jesus and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane and they were all afraid. I mean, they came and they saw this man, this man who had, they had tried to bind. Jesus had set them, Jesus had set him free and now his mind was sane. He was now fully dressed because one of the characteristics of the devil that he does is that he takes away your sanity when the enemy um declares war over your life he will take away he will try to take away your sanity you will not reason in the way that god enabled you to reason the way god created you to reason he will take away your clothing and clothing by clothing it means glory it means the covering over your life and he will leave you naked and exposed he will bring Bring self-inflicted pain, self-destruction. But I love Jesus because at his word, at, because at, at the mention, at, at, at his word, Jesus set this man free. His mind came back to him. He, he restored his soul. Just like, just like David says in the book of Psalms 23, that you restore my soul. When the soul of this man was being destroyed by the devil, the Lord destroyed, the Lord restored him and the Lord restored his sanity. The Lord restored um, his, his clothing. The Lord restored his life. And he was just there seated and listening. And for once he was not shouting and screaming. He was seated and listening. And do you want to know somebody who the Lord has taken over their life? That is a person who's, who is characterized by just sitting down and listening to the voice of God. I love this. I love this. 
It is so powerful. And the Bible says that these people were afraid because there is no other power. They had not seen a power like this. And I love what happens in verse number 16 says that then those who had seen what happened told the others about the demon possessed man and the pigs and the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. And look what happens in verse 18 as Jesus was getting into the boat because when they asked Jesus to leave, when they asked Jesus, when they told Jesus that you know they didn't they didn't want him, Jesus actually obeyed. He when 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 you don't want Jesus in your life, he will leave. When you don't want Christ in your life, he will actually leave. Jesus is not in the, in the business of, of forcing himself onto people. He leads, he, he, he brings godly sorrow, a conviction that leads to repentance, but he's not in the business of forcing himself onto anyone. That is why he says in the book of Revelation chapter three, verse 20, that I Stand at the door of your gate and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will dine with him. And when they asked Jesus to leave, Jesus obeyed. He got into the boat and he, he began to leave. Verse number 18 says that as Jesus uh, was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, no, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. In other words, Jesus told him, go and evangelize. I commission you to be an evangelist of the good news. I commission you, I give you the power and I give you the words to go and tell people what the Lord has done for you. In other words, what Jesus was telling him, go and preach the good news of Jesus. And this is the story of a man turned from demon possessed to being an evangelist of the word of God. I thank God because the Bible does not in any way try to explain where the demons had come from. That means that where the demons has come from, have come from is not relevant. It's not relevant where the demons had come from. What is relevant is that Christ had the power to heal this man and heal him completely. Change his life from being bound to being an evangelist of the word. Are you there? It does not matter where you got the demons from. It does not matter whether you got them from drunkenness, whether you got them from homosexuality, whether you got them from um, uh, being a satanist. It does not matter. It's not relevant. What is relevant is that the power of Christ is enough to change any demon possessed man into being a fully clothed man, a man full of grace, a man who listens to the voice of God. And in, in addition to that, commissioning you, giving you his spirit to making you an evangelist of his word. Are you there and you've never given your life to Jesus? It's my privilege and honor to lead you to Christ this day. It's my privilege. It would be a privilege and honor to be able to do that. Just repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner in need of a savior. From today, I belong to Jesus. Forgive my sins. Rub my name from the book of the dead and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. I belong to Jesus. And I will serve him with all my life. Jesus, I accept you. Holy Spirit, come into my life and guide my life. I honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you say that prayer with me, you are now born again. You belong to Jesus. You no longer belong to the world of darkness. So write to me. Let me know what Jesus has done. It would be a privilege and an honor. It's a privilege and an honor to be able to lead you to Christ. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person who has said that prayer and given their lives to you. I pray that you will keep them. I pray that you will wash them. I pray that, Lord, your love will surround them. Thank you for your 
your goodness and your grace. Thank you for this day. Release your glory upon their lives. Let the Holy Spirit guide them for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give you thanks. Amen and amen and amen. Have a blessed day or blessed night. And God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I love you so much. My name is Edith Wairimo. I am a gosh, I am a gospel. Uh, minister you can find my my music on youtube and uh, and uh, edith wairimo you can also find my content on my facebook page edith wairimo kenya or my instagram page edith wairimo kenya i bless you so much and i love you so much shalom <laughs>